Let's talk about municipal finance, financing big cities. And boy, uh, there's not too many bigger than the city of Chicago. Jenny Huang Bennett joins us. She's a chief finance officer for the city of Chicago. Uh, Jenny, thanks so much for joining us here at the Build America Mutual offices. Talk to us about the the financial situation, the financial health, the financial um, you know outlook for the city of Chicago, a great city, one of America's great cities. Talk to us about Chicago. Sure, absolutely, and thank you for having me. Always happy to talk about the city of Chicago and its financial turnaround. Um, you don't have to take my word for it, although I will speak to some of the financial improvements at the city. But very importantly, the city of Chicago has achieved 10 rating upgrades across various credits at the city of Chicago, plus two outlook upgrades um, to positive uh, over the last four months. And it's a demonstration of the financial turnaround that the city's in right now. The upgrades have spanned the city's uh, GO SDSC credit, um, the uh, airport credit, the water and sewer credits, uh, the uh, O'Hare and Midway credits, and all of that for the first time in six to 12 years. What's years. driving that? Um, it's a lot of financial improvement at the city in particular. The corporate fund credit um, has seen structural balance now um, for the first time in decades. Uh, we have climbed a uh, pension ramp that has included $1.8 billion in increased uh, pension funding over the last uh, three years. And very importantly, uh, we have uh, found a way to do all of that in the midst of a pandemic. And so uh, it's a very important turnaround for the city in terms of all of the financial metrics that rating analysts follow on a regular basis. Um, very importantly, we've also climbed our debt ramp, which uh, allows us to amortize somewhere between 300 to $400 million in principle a year. Um, that's reduced our overall debt burden by three quarters of a billion dollars um, over the last three years. And by way of perspective, the city of Chicago has $26 billion of debt outstanding. Um, in general, we are one of the top 10 issuers in municipal debt in the market. And so um, it's a, there's a, there are a lot of financial metric improvements that have occurred over the last three years, in particular during Mayor Lightfoot's administration, um, but also over the course of decades for the city of Chicago that has led to this moment where um, we are getting recognition across the board by the rating agencies. Yeah, so no more junk. Uh, debt for the city of Chicago, and you found ways to make an impact socially, right, in terms of your debt issuance. Yes, absolutely. Um, so to your point, uh, Moody's has upgraded us to investment grade, and so now the city of Chicago is investment grade across all of its credits. Um, in addition to that, because of the fact that we've climbed our debt ramp and because of the fact that we've climbed our pension ramp, cleared our deferred liabilities, we're now able to make historic investments in the city of Chicago. Um, there are three main investment plans. There's the Chicago Recovery Plan, which is $1.2 billion, making some of the his most historic progressive investments in the city, including the vacant lot investment program, um, affordable housing, fleet decarbonization, um, so on and so forth. There's the Invest Southwest program, which makes $2 billion of economic development investments in south and west side neighborhoods, largely low-income neighborhoods in Chicago. And then there's the Chicago Works program, which is our deferred um, capital maintenance program, streets, lighting, um, typical infrastructure investment. All told, that's $6 billion of investments that we're making. And uh, within that, we've selected a number of projects that will make up our inaugural social impact bond issuance, which will be coming um, in the next month or so. So in the last several years, we've seen some big corporate um, residents of Chicago leave, Citadel, Boeing. Talk to us about the challenges you as a city have in, in kind of trying to attract and retain uh, corporate residents, you know, big uh, Big, big companies. Sure. So I, I would offer that um, although, you know, we, um, you know, are saddened by the loss of those firms that you mentioned in particular, um, the number of jobs impacted are very small as compared to the total number of jobs that we've increased over the course of the last few years, in particular in the midst of the pandemic. So the city of Chicago has seen 171 pro-Chicago decisions, which we define as um, headquarters um, or corporate relocations that increase their presence in the city of Chicago. And that's created around 20,000 new jobs jobs, and which then themselves creates another 30,000 right. jobs. Some notable recent um, additions includes Google, who has a, um, added a new um, facility to their existing facility in the West Loop that'll generate um, thousands of new jobs for the city. Uh, Kellogg um, has announced that they're moving their largest division to the city of Chicago, which is their snack division, rounding about $11 billion of revenue. And then um, in addition to that, we also had Kimberly Clark make a major corporate relocation as well as um, uh, as as well as Discover, who uh, put their largest call center in one of our south side neighborhoods. What's it like working with Illinois? Because I'm assuming uh, some of the leavers had concerns about the state more than the city of Chicago. 
Um, so the city of Chicago is uh, the largest economic engine within the state of Illinois. Of course. And we provide a lot of, uh, a lot of revenue to the state. Um, we did just pass a casino as well, which will generate significant um, value to the state and to the city, somewhere around $5 billion in total. Um, so there are a lot of ways that we contribute to the state. Um, you know, we also uh, spend a lot so of wait, time. There's going to be a casino in Chicago. Yes, there's a new casino in Chicago. It's been authorized. It's rounding about two hundred million dollars a year in revenue to the city, um, uh, and then another, um, you know, uh, two hundred million or so in revenue to the state of Illinois. Talk to us about the crime situation in Chicago and how, what kind of headwinds that presents to the city, and, and kind of what's the administration's plan to, to try to address that. We have, you know similar issues here in New York City, but Chicago seems to get a lot of attention. Um, so what we're experiencing in terms of tr uh, public safety trends is not dissimilar from what a lot of other urban areas face. Um, you know, we know in the city of Chicago that there's been historic segregation um, and uh, disinvestment in largely low-income neighborhoods. And so that's why one of the um, uh, I I uh, investments that we started out with even before uh, the investments, investment plans I just mentioned, um, you know, was about making deeper investments in south and west side neighborhoods in order to try to right some of those historic um, wrongs. What that means by way of public safety is that we're making the investments that create wraparound services that addresses the root causes of violence. So rather than taking a policing approach, which we know will have immediate impact, but ultimately won't create transformative change for those neighborhoods, we're taking that broader uh, citywide whole of government approach. What's that, what that's resulted in, in the top 15 communities that have over 50% of the crime in the city of Chicago, they've seen somewhere between a 30 to 50% reduction in crime, in particular by way of homicides and shootings. And so we know the approach is working. Um, you know, we are also working on um, ramping up recruiting efforts for the uh, police department. In the most recent budget we passed, there was $100 million of additional public safety investments for um, the police department in particular. Um, there are new cell phones being provided to all patrol officers who will then um, have a more efficient way of being able to receive calls and understand where calls of service have been, file reports in the field. And so a lot of uh, investment is being made in, tor in, in terms of both um, direct public safety investments as well as whole government investments to help support the, uh, the public safety in, in Chicago. So I think it's interesting that you're not just a numbers CFO. You're invested in making a difference socially. The public schools for, you were the CFO of the Chicago Public I was public the CFO schools. of the public schools. I think one of the most uh, interesting things about municipal finance in general is that what we do is ultimately not just about the numbers, but how the math and the money ultimately creates investments. Um, I said this uh, in a recent uh, speech where ultimately what we do by way of financial stability is so important because it pays for the investments that we make. And so the point I made earlier about the fact that we've paid down three quarters of a billion dollars in debt and are now paying down our debt to the tune of three to four hundred million a year. Those are now investments that we can make through the, sh through the various investment programs that total about $8 billion. We are making some of the most historic investments in the city of Chicago without increasing our debt burden. And that's because of the fact that we have financial stability and a way to pay for these investments. Casinos, by the way, have long been a way of raising money um, for municipalities. Now there's weed. And I wonder what you think about that, because it's legal in Illinois, right? Yes, that's and correct. you yep. must be able to generate significant revenue. Um, does that some of that go to Chicago or is it all to the state? How's that work? So the majority of the money does go to the state. We do see some of that money uh, come to us for public safety. The amount isn't large, but we do receive some portion of money. Um, by way of casinos, um, you know, it is going to generate significant revenue for our police and fire pension funds. But in addition to that, it's already happening. Um, it's all going to Indiana at this point. And so uh. the Chicago casino, we expect, uh, will repatriate approximately $190 million of gaming activity back to the city, um, which ultimately allows us to pay for uh, Illinois essential services as, as opposed to essential services in other states. All right. Great stuff. Jenny Wong Bennett, Chief Financial Officer for the City of Chicago, joining us live here at our Build America Mutual uh, headquarters.